The reason you can move, the reason you can think, the reason you can do anything is because of the proteins inside of your cells. Now, how do we make these proteins? That's what we're going to investigate today. Hey everybody, this is Organized Biology, and today we are going through the central dogma or idea of biology, the study of life in the concept of protein synthesis. This literally means how our cells, all 30 trillion of them in the human body, produce proteins, which will then be the characteristics of those cells, whether they're muscle cells, whether they're brain cells or skin cells, the proteins build those cells. So we're going to divide this process up in two main steps. Step number one, we're going to talk about transcription, where we are transcribing information from DNA, you've probably heard of before, to mRNA, which is messenger RNA. From there, we'll take it on to step two, which will be translation when we take mRNA and we're translating it into the protein itself, which will give your cells its structure and its function. So let's get started. First off, this is going to be just a normal diagram of any one of your cells. In your cells, you have this big, dark, circular center, which is called the nucleus. You've probably heard of or seen this thing before. Anytime you look under a microscope, you see the big, dark dot, that's the nucleus. And inside the nucleus, we have a very important long chain of molecule called DNA. This is short for deoxyribonucleic acid. Now, I want you to think of DNA as like the instruction manual for your cells and how they're going to build those proteins, okay? So very important, and we need to keep these guys safe, right? So we store them in this double membrane organelle so that nothing can get in, really, and not too much can get out. Okay, so it's like Area 51. Only very specialized things can come in and out, okay? Now, DNA, inside of it, we will have these little letters. And this is where the code actually is. If this is instruction manual, it needs letters. So we're going to see four letters. We're going to see A, we're going to see T, we're going to see G, and we're going to see C. Now, they will always bond this way. A will always bond with T. And G will always bond with C through these things called hydrogen bonds. And that's what gives the DNA its double helix structure. You've probably heard of DNA as double stranded. It's got two strands running alongside, kind of parallel to each other. And we see that here. So we see A going with T and G going with C. All right? So this is the instruction manual in the nucleus. Now, there's a problem. If the instruction manual is here, we need to tell the protein builders, the construction workers of our cells, the ribosomes about these instructions. But the DNA never leaves the nucleus. In fact, it's too big. It's just too big of a molecule to leave and tell these ribosomes what they need to make. So what do we need to do? We need to transcribe the message. And this is where mRNA is going to come from. So check this out. In the nucleus, some of the DNA will be unwound, opened up for an important enzyme to get in here. I'm going to draw this enzyme as a little circle, and this is going to be called RNA polymerase. If we break this word down, we are going to form a chain of RNA, which is similar to DNA, but it's going to be single-stranded, and polymerase. This means it's an enzyme, ACE, that's going to make a polymer, a long chain of RNA. So this RNA polymerase is going to attach here and begin transcribing this DNA onto mRNA. And this is what it's going to look like. So this strand of the DNA right here is actually going to be called the template strand. This is the one we're actually going to read from. On the top one, it's called the coding strand. And we're not really going to focus on that one. We're going to focus on the template strand. So when we open up the DNA, we're going to start making some RNA, single-stranded. So we're going to have a single strand of RNA, and we're going to match it to this DNA in a complement. All right? So here's a key thing you need to know, though. In RNA, we have one letter of a switch. Okay? So be really careful with this. A will still be there, but it will actually bond with U, which stands for uracil. So in RNA, we're replacing the T with a U. All right? And the G will still go with C through hydrogen bonds, all right? And this is specifically messenger RNA, all right? So now that we have this code, let's see if we can actually transcribe it, step one. So T will like to go with 
A. So that will be our first letter of our RNA. A will like to go with U, remember, because this is mRNA. C will like to go with G, and then I'm going to finish it out and see if you can get it right. All right, did you get it? So I've got A U G C U U U A G. Here's our mRNA strand right here. Now, check this out. I told you that there was a problem, right? The instruction manual of DNA is in the nucleus, but we need to get it to the ribosome. Well, in the mRNA, it's a single strand. It's really thin. That makes it able to actually pass out of what's called these nuclear pores, these little windows of the nucleus, and get out into the cytoplasm of the cell, which is just the fluid surrounding all the organelles of the cell. So now we've got our transcript. Step one is complete. And this mRNA strand is going to travel over to the ribosome. So we're going to shift over here in a second. OK, so now I've got the mRNA transcript actually coming into the ribosome. Now, if you notice how I drew it, I fit about three letters of the mRNA inside the ribosome at any one time. This is really important because the ribosome reads these in threes. OK, so this three, this AUG, any segment of three is called a codon. OK, and this codon is going to code for a specific amino acid. So I want you to key into that codes for a specific amino acid. Now, you may have heard of amino acids before. Maybe you haven't. But what amino acids are, are the base units of proteins. OK, they are the base units of proteins. So therefore, if we put these amino acids together, we will produce the protein that I talked about at the very beginning, the structure and function for the cell. So base units of proteins. Wonderful. Now, here's the kicker. There are 20 different amino acids. OK, so think about this in terms of like our alphabet, right? We have 26 different letters in the English alphabet, and you have 20 different amino acids. If you put them in different orders, they will make a completely different structure or a completely different word in the case of the alphabet if you put them together in different ways. And that's how we get all these different types of proteins. There's literally billions of possibilities of different protein shapes and therefore different functions. So in this case, we need to put together the proper sequence of amino acids that was coded for originally in the DNA. So let's see what happens next. So I've got my codon AUG in the mRNA chilling in the ribosome. Now, we need a little help here. We need what's called transfer RNA, which is up here. And this transfer RNA, tRNA for short, contains what's called the anticodon. Okay, why do you think it's called the anticodon? Well, probably because it's opposite of the codon, right? The codon was on the mRNA. The anticodon is on the tRNA. I always remember that because anti has that T in it, right? So it's on the tRNA. And this anticodon, check it out, contains or is holding, better word for that, the amino acid. So on the tRNA, there are amino acids chilling on it. So in these two tRNAs, I've got MET, which stands for methionine, and LEU, that stands for leucine. Those are two of the 20 amino acids. Very cool. Now, I want you to look on here, and I want you to guess which tRNA, either this one or this one, is going to actually come in and bind with that AUG. So go ahead and look at them. Got your answer? I think it is going to be this one. Now, why did I say that? Well, because if you have UAC, U likes to go with A, U likes to go with A again, and then G likes to go with C. So this UAC tRNA is going to pop in, and it is actually going to drop off its amino acid. So now the ribosome will be like, hey, bro, thank you very much. Let me grab onto that methionine for you. So now the methionine amino acid will be added to this growing protein. So there you have it. We've got methionine. Now we're going to shift the RNA over a little bit. And as it shifts, we're going to bring CUU underneath this ribosome, the top part of it, right? So if we have CUU, well, now that goes with GAA, 
right? So now that tRNA molecule is going to come on in, and it's then going to attach its amino acid to that growing polypeptide. So now we've got methionine, and it's going to push over a little bit, so let me diagram this here. So now we have methionine attached to a leucine. Well, here's the thing. After we put those two together, now we have UAC. Now, I purposefully did not draw a tRNA with this, and that is because UAC has no anticodon on tRNA. So, this is fascinating. This UAC G. literally means stop. It's like, hey, stop running the conveyor belt of the ribosome, stop what you're doing, the protein is done. So, that will signal the ribosome to be like, yo, we're done, cut it off, and now we have our protein that will exit the ribosome in methionine and leucine. And that will be our finished protein product in this case. So there are different codes, codons, that actually code for stop, okay? I believe another one is UGA, for example. That codes for stop. It's because there's no tRNA to match with it as an anticodon, no amino acid chain, ribosome cuts it off. So here is our finished protein. Wonderful, and that was the goal, right? Translation, taking mRNA, attaching amino acids together in the ribosome, and producing the protein, and that is called translation. Wonderful. Now, key point, this isn't just some nebulous idea that you need to memorize, right? What's important here is depending on the amino acids, remember we have 20 to play with, and depending on their order, they might be shaped differently. So in reality, proteins could look like this long chain of a bunch of amino acids that will look kind of like this, all folded up like crazy, that will have a specific function. Because every structure, every structure will be so specific that it will have a specific function. So for example, let's say this is a cell that needs to bring in, for example, some nutrients from the outside. So maybe it's lining your intestines, right? Well, maybe we'll make a protein that will look something like this, like a gate. And maybe that gate will go out here and embed itself in the cell membrane so that then nutrients like glucose or amino acids could actually pass into it to nourish your body. So these proteins do literally everything for your cells, give you all the functions of your cells, therefore giving you a functional working human body. Wonderful. Hey, this has been Organized Biology, Protein Synthesis. If this was helpful, please like the video so more people can watch it. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested in biology and human anatomy. And thank you so much for watching.